Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here, back with another crochet tutorial on how to make a graph gan. Now for this tutorial, I obviously won't have enough time to make an entire blanket, so we're going to make a graph gan dish rag. It will have the same concept, the same steps, and you will get the gist of how to make an actual graph gan. Now your pattern you're going to use is going to be a lot bigger than the one you see here in front of me. The pattern that you see in front of me, yes, it is drawn. Uh, I got this graphing paper notebook off of Amazon, which I will link down below. Um, I sometimes will make little patterns like this for like graph beanies, which I do have a video for that as well, which I will also link down below. Um, mostly is for graph beanies or if I'm making graph slippers or a graph scarf. I will sometimes draw up little cute patterns like this for children because they seem to like the blockier patterns um, whenever it comes to making graph gams. So for this tutorial, you are going to need a graph, which I will supply the graph down below. I will link it. Actually, I found it on Pinterest. I found one that looks similar to this one, except for it has like a shiny spot on the heart, but you can make it with or without the shiny spot spot. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied here. You can make it with or without that spot. It doesn't really matter. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm leaving this on the screen so that you can take a screenshot of it. You can take a picture of it, do what you have to do so that you can make this graph with me. So the items you're going to need first are a graph. You're also going to need a crochet hook, which I will be using my five and a half millimeter clover hook here. You're also going to need stitch markers, which I have my little bag. And you're also going to need at least one to two different colors of yarn, which I will be using these two Red Heart yarns. These seem to be the ones that I'll, I'm able to see the best because of being colorblind. So these are the two that you'll most likely see when I do graphing or any kind of tutorial crochet related. You will also need a pair of scissors. So once you have those items, come back and we can get started. So, with graph gans, a lot of people are interested in making them, but they don't know quite where to start. Now, with my friend Cindy Jo, she has tons upon tons upon tons of graphs on her Facebook page. And again, I will link her down below that you can choose from. Her graphs are relatively inexpensive. I believe they're two to three dollars and five dollars if you want something customized with like somebody's name or a special little something. She will even, if you supply her with a picture, sometimes if she's able to, she will create that graph for you. So please go ahead, stop by, say hi, say hello, tell her that Alicia sent you um, and see what all selection she has. She does have a vast selection of, di um, I'm sorry, of crocheted items. Um, but to get started, when you get your graph, it's going to look like this. It's going to be on, obviously it's going to be on paper. It's going to be different colors and everything else. Mine's is obviously just on graph paper. So first it's how do you read the graph? Because yeah, you have all these little squares, but what do you do with them? So what I've done is if you draw out a graph, you want to know how wide the graph is and how tall it is. Because for your project, you're going to need to do that many stitches across and that many stitches up. So if I was putting this on a beanie, the beanie would have to be at least, we're going to start from number three here because it's on the number three line. So from the number three to the number 15, which is, means it's going to have to be at least 12 stitches wide, which we would probably round that up to 16 to make a nice even number. And if it was going up, we're going to start from the three here and it goes up to the 13. So it's going to be, need to be at least 10 stitches high, which we of course would make to 12 to give it that buffer in between this, the actual project and the graph. You don't want it to start and stop right at the graph. So even though we're not doing a beanie today, I'm going to show you how to make this as a dishcloth or a rag. Now when making graphs, you can make it in any yarn you want. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are telling you, you have to use this yarn and that yarn. This is your project. You make it with whatever yarn you have available. You don't have to go out and buy expensive yarn. You don't have to go out and buy expensive hooks and all these other supplies. No, you could, you don't even have to have the, the, the stitch markers. Like I have these 
And before I had my stitch markers, I had bobby pins. Or you can use bread ties. I've seen people use, you know, bits of string as stitch markers. As long as you have something to mark your stitch, just like your yarn. If you can only afford Red Heart yarn, use Red Heart yarn. It's your project. You do what you want. And this right here is just for practice. Now, when you're making a bigger project, you might want to look into using other yarns, depending on what you're using that project or making that project for. But for right now, for this tutorial, use any yarn you want. Party yarn, uh, Red Heart Metallic, you know, Merino wool, doesn't matter. You use whatever yarn you want. So to read this pattern, we, so we figured out that you would need it to be what you would need it to be this way across and this way up. So how would you go about this? So you would obviously start your, your chain of how many stitches you need. So as you get started, go ahead, get your main color. Your main color is going to be the color you use as the base. Your project color or your graph color is going to be the secondary color you picked for the project. So grab your, your yarn and we're going to get started with this. All right. And now that you have your supplies, let's get started. So for my little graph, I am going to do a base chain of 17 because you want to have space for the graph to fit and there to be room on the sides and the top. So my base chain is going to be 17. So we're just going to chain 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now this is going to be little, and that's okay, because like I said, it's just for practice. If I went too fast, or you're not quite ready, feel free to pause the video and get to this point. Once you're to this point, we can continue. Or if you're ready, we can go up to the next row. Now, I know I said I wanted to do 17, but that's such an odd number. So I'm going to do 21. 18, 19, 20. 21. So we're going to do 21 because then my favorite stitch to do my graphs is half double crochet. It's not small like single crochet, but it's not super big and it's going to leave a lot of gaps in between your graph like double crochet would. So I personally use half double crochet. Now you can use whatever you want to use, but for this tutorial, we are going to use half double crochet. And if you don't know how to do that, I also have a video for that in my um, channel, so I will link that down below as well. Or there are tons of other videos and stuff on YouTube that you can go check out if, you know, mine's isn't as detailed as you would like it to be. Feel free to, you know, look around, just search half double crochet in your search bar and it should show you all the half double crochet videos you could possibly need. So once you get your 21 chains, we're going to go up to the next row. Now this next row, we're going to skip two chains and go into the third chain on the hook because those two chains count as your first half double crochet. We're going to half we're going to half double crochet in that third chain from the hook and all the way across. And again, if I go too fast for you, please feel free to pause the video. Like I said, make this your own. You don't have to use the yarn that I'm using, which if I haven't already said it, I'm using Red Heart with Love. It's my favorite yarn. It's nice and soft, but it's still, you know, durable and plushy. And I just love the way it feels, especially when I'm making blankets. It would take a little bit more than if I was using Red Heart yarn, like regular, like Super Saver. But that's okay. I like... Red Heart with Love. We all have our favorite yarns, and this is my favorite yarn. And it's very inexpensive, and I can find it just about anywhere. So, we're just going to keep going until we get to the corner. And you see it curling up. And most people would be alarmed and think, oh, well, you know, this isn't turning out right. Have faith in the process. 
your first row of any project is going to look a little weird and that's okay because it'll work itself out as you continue to go along. And I'll show you that here in a few seconds. As soon as we get to this end piece. And there we have it, our first chain. Now you're gonna do the same thing back across and I'll meet you at the other side. All right, and now that we have our second row, the third row is where the magic starts. This is the row that you're going to start your graph. So let's take a second to look at the graph I have. Now, when you're doing your graph, because you wanna leave so much space on the sides and stuff, the reason for that is so that when I execute putting the graph on this little swatch we're making here, it's so that there's room on the sides for it to expand. You don't want to start your graph here and then have no room for, say, this part here to grow out. You want to make sure you start your graph directly into the center. The bottom of it should be in the center, depending on where your graph says to start. So for this graph, we're going to start trying to start in the dead center of it. So let's see. We're going to count our stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we have 19. So we're going to get two of our little stitch markers here. Sorry, they're not going to stick to each other in here. We're going to grab two of our stitch markers. And say this is the center point. I'm just going to mark that there because I want to make sure I have an equal amount of stitches on each side. So I know that that's direct, the direct center. Now that's just for this project. If your project starts with the, the graph on this side, that's where you start. It's wherever your graph starts. So since we're working our way up, and we'll mark this off as we go. So we did this row, which is the second row, and we did this row. You always want to make sure you mark off what part you've completed so you don't end up mixing yourself up, okay? So, and let me get you in a little closer here so you can see that. There we go. So, we're working from the bottom up. Some people work from the top down. Some people work from left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. But for this tutorial, we're going to work from the bottom up. I always work from the bottom up every once in a while, which I think I've done it maybe twice. I've worked from right to left. And where it does look nice, I still prefer to go up and down because then it's easier for me to read. And then when you're reading the graph, so right now we're starting on this side. So when we turn our work, it'll be like this because your slip stitch is on this side. So... When we go back to read it, we're going to read it going this way. So when you mark your work off, make sure you put a little arrow to let yourself know which direction you're going because you don't want to mix yourself up. Where this pattern, it shouldn't matter which way I decide to go because of it being a reversal side or reversal type pattern. If you're working a detailed pattern and you end up going the wrong way or reading it the wrong way, your pattern will come out backwards every other row. So you want to make sure you're marking with an arrow which direction you're starting to go, okay? So for this, we're going to the left. So our stitch is going to be right here in the dead center. So let's check to see if we did an equal amount on each side of our stitch marker here. So we had 19 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine stitches on that side. Make sure it's focusing on that. We're gonna zoom you out a little bit here. All right. And then we have, make sure you're focused. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. All right, so where that stitch marker is, is where your pattern is going to start for this pattern, okay? So, 
If you look at our graph, which we'll zoom you back in here so you can see it. If you look at the graph, this is the center and you have your stitches going out this way and your stitches going out that way. And what I mean by that is your, your pattern starts here, but it will expand out. Now for that expanding of it going out, you want to make sure you count how many rows that is or how many, how many squares away that is from your center point. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And since we have nine, that leaves us ample space on the sides for there to be a border. So you're not essentially graphing right up to the edges of your project. So we know with, by this arrow that we're gonna be reading it this way. So let's go ahead and execute that. And don't get discouraged if you don't get it right on your first try. This is supposed to be fun, and this is also practice. So if you need to take the time to pause the video, please feel free to do so. I'll be here when you hit play to continue going on with it. So what I did was I chained one to get ready for my next row. So I'm going to half double crochet, and like I said, we said that that was six stitches away. But since we have nine, we're going to do... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Now stop right there before you complete that stitch. Now if you've seen my video on color change, you will know the proper way, especially when you're graphing, if you want your graph to have a, if you want the back to mirror the front, you want to make sure you stop at this point. This is called a working stitch. A working stitch is a stitch that hasn't been completed yet. So because we're doing half double crochets, you're gonna have three loops on your hook. That is a working stitch. You wanna stop there. You wanna grab your graph color, which ours is gonna be this pretty teal. And I'm gonna pull some of it off here so that I have plenty to work with. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a slip stitch, which I've already done to save some time. You're gonna add that slip stitch on and tighten it up really good. And you're gonna finish that stitch, sorry. You're gonna finish that stitch with that new color. So you're just gonna pull that teal through the purple and you just did a color change, okay? So then I'm gonna complete that one stitch. Now it's only one stitch that we need in that color. So what I just did was I grabbed the tail end of that slip stitch for the teal and I'm grabbing my purple. And why am I doing that? Because I'm going to stitch those into this next stitch. So I'm gonna put those stitches or those strands on top of that stitch and I'm gonna go right into the stitch where the stitch marker is. And I'm gonna leave it as a working stitch because I only need one stitch on this row of that color. And then this is when I pick up my purple and I complete that stitch with the purple. And as you can see, you can't tell that you changed colors. It just looks like the color just magically changed in the yarn. And so you're gonna continue on and make sure you leave that tail for that second color. You can either trim it and do one more stitch underneath or you can um, essentially keep working it on the top of your stitches. But we're gonna stitch the whole way back to the other side of the little project we're doing here. I guess this can be like a little dish rag. It'll be like a miniature dish rag, I guess. So we're just going to work our way back. And this pattern is going to be very easy. So this pattern is going to be for, for, for people who are beginning or are just learning how to graph because um, it's something that's really simple and easy to do and it doesn't require a whole lot of color changing. All right, so now that we're at the end, 
we're now going to turn our work. We're going to chain one, turn, we're going to half double crochet, and I'm going to stop right there so that I can show you. And as you can see, in the back of this, if I can get it to focus right there, in the back of this, you have that tail. Now, this is where your handy dandy scissors are going to come in handy. If you don't want that sticking out or you don't want to have to weave that in because it's securely under the next, looks like two or three stitches, you can just trim that off. It's not going anywhere. You can even pull it and it'll pull it tighter into the stitches and boom, a flawless color change. So now you don't want, you want to make sure you don't mess with that tail. And if you can, try to use bobbins, because if not, your work will get tangled. And yes, it is a pain in the butt. I'm not a big, I'm not the biggest fan of bobbins, personally. I don't like bobbins. I actually have a graphing box, which I could link down below as well. Um, I pull the strands up through the box, and that's how I work with my, my color changes. But for this tutorial, I didn't want to pull out a whole box for two colors. I'll deal with it being tangled. So, working on our next row... We're going to pull our graph out here. And as you can see, we went and completed this side. So we're going to go up here. We're going to pull, put an arrow to sh tell us that we're going now from the left to the right. And I'm going to try to adjust the lighting here so that I'm not casting too many shadows. There we go. So we're going to go from the left to the right now. Now we're going to, in we're going to increase the number of the graphing or ch color changes. So instead of one stitch, now we're gonna use three stitches. And essentially, we're gonna continue doing that the whole way up, but right now we're just gonna focus on round two. Round two is gonna have three of the teal color and then back to the normal color for the rest. So let's execute that now. So go ahead and grab your work. And like I said, if you don't use bobbins, it will get tangled and be a pain in the butt. If you can deal with it just for this tutorial, that's fine. But I would suggest using bobbins or getting a box that you could put the yarn in to make like yarn cakes and stuff like that. So we're going to go this way. And as you saw in the graph, the color changed right before, the stitch before that first stitch we made. So we're going to go all the way over. How many stitches have we completed so far? One, two, three four, five. And by stitches, for those of you who don't know, I mean, because I don't know if you're new to crocheting or not, so we're just going to make sure we get detailed as possible with this tutorial. So for those of you who don't know, the stitches, see these little V's up top here? I'll put my crochet hook through one of them. You see the little V up top here? Oh, come on, focus. There we go. This little V is a stitch. Each of the little V's you see on top is a stitch. So that's what you would count if you're counting stitches. So it'd be one, two, three, four, and underneath that one is five. All right, we're gonna zoom out just a little bit here. All right, and we're also gonna try not to shake you so you don't get sick. So we're gonna keep going. So what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and remember to stop. Now when you stop there, because I left this working color change in, all I have to do is pull it up and wrap it around my hook, finish that purple with the teal, and now we're going to pull our purple working yarn over because we're going to crochet that into the stitch. We're going to lay it on top of the stitches and then you're going to work the stitch as normal. So we need three teals. One, two, three. Now remember to stop. Leave the teal at the last teal color as a working stitch you're gonna pull that back and hang on to it. Because right now you're done with that color. And then what I like to do is I like to pull that to give it a little, make it a little more taut so that it's tighter, so that it's not bulging out the back of your work. Once you get it nice and taut, you're going to wrap it around your hook and finish that half double crochet in the teal with the purple. And then you can take the purple and continue on down your work. 
And once you get to this point, you can go ahead and just crochet all the way down. And I'm gonna try to not make this tutorial super long, so I might skip through like this part here from this point forward, just so that for time's sake, you're not watching an hour and a half long video. All right, now you chain one and turn your work. Now, as you can see, that doesn't look like much, right? It doesn't even look centered because this, this one here is like way over there and that one, trust the process. So we're on row three. Your work should look something like this at this point. So we grab our graph and you wanna make sure you keep good notes on your graph because if you don't, you will mess up. So you want to, after every row, you count your stitches and then look at your graph and mark off what you've done. So we've done this row. Next is this row. We're gonna draw an arrow to let us know that we're going from right to left. And we're gonna execute the next row. Now the next row is still adding more color to our design. So we're gonna add one stitch on the outside of the three we did. So we should have five stitches in the teal. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute that. And by this point, you should be getting the hang of it. If not, keep watching. So we're gonna half double crochet all the way over and I'm gonna go a little bit faster, like I said, just for time's sake. Because at this point, I mean, you know how to crochet, obviously, if you're watching this video. If not, I have a full tutorial on how to begin crocheting. Feel free to watch it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to let me know that I'm helping somebody out there learn how to do this. All right, so we're gonna leave that last one as a working stitch. Now remember, we had to add another teal. Sorry, I gotta make sure I'm in frame here. We're gonna add another teal to this purple so that it expands out, so that it gets wider. So we're gonna leave that purple as a working stitch. We're gonna grab our teal tail. <laughs> Say that five times fast, teal tail. We're gonna pull it through the purple so that you have your color change. Now again, grab your purple and set it on top of your stitches, which might sound easy, but I know with beginners, it could be a little hard, but essentially when you put your new color on and you go through that first stitch to change the color, just make sure that this strand up top here wraps behind the working color. And then when you pull it through, it should attach it to that stitch on the back. Okay, and I'll get closer so you can see that. See how the purple is like underneath the teal there from me pulling it through? I'll pull it out so you can see it. So if I pull that out, that brings that purple back up. But if I go into this stitch and with this yarn being sitting on top of the work, if I yarn over here and pull through, it's gonna pin that purple stitch down or that purple strand down, which is what you want. So you're gonna pin it down you're gonna pull that through and we're gonna do five teal stitches. One, two, if I can keep my yarn on my hook here. Three, four, and one more. Oh, again, if I can keep my yarn on the hook here. Five, now on the fifth stitch, remember, keep it as a working, working yarn, or a working stitch, I'm sorry yarn over with the purple because you essentially been dragging that through those stitches. So you can pull it to make sure it's tight, yarn over with the purple and pull the purple through the green stitch. Okay. And we're going to pull that green, that teal through. Now you're not going to carry the teal through because you need it to stay there for your next row. So then now you're going to half double crochet for the rest of that round back to the beginning and I'll meet you there. All right, how are we doing so far? Did we get it? Are we on the next round? Now don't forget, check your pattern. Mark off what you've already completed. Put an arrow showing you which way you're going now. All right, so before I put that away, so we're now going from left to right and we're gonna add another color, or another stitch of the color to the next round. So it should start making like a little staircase or an upside down staircase. 
okay? And if you're not doing okay at this point and you're lost or confused, please feel free to stop the video here, rewind, and try it again. Nothing in life ever comes easy. We all know these things. Nobody gets it right on the first try. If you have to, try and try again. Plus, practice makes permanent. I practiced for a very long time before I got good at graph ganning. So that's how I'm able to essentially show you how to do it. So if you are doing okay or you are ready to move on, let's do so. Now I've already done my chain one and crocheted over to where I need to be. I left my stitch as a working stitch, which has the three loops on the hook. So now we're gonna change color again because we have to add another block of color. And if you can't tell, each square on your graph, oh, there's something I can show you. All right, so I started, I finished that stitch off with the um, teal. And now you see how there's this line right here? And you're probably wondering like, you know, you just go around the line. No, 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 no. Let me show you a trick. You pull your working yarn for their main color across. Once you yarn over, go underneath that into the stitch. Don't go on top of that, that teal strand that's just sitting there. With the purple and the teal strand, you want those under or on top of your hook and then go into the stitch. And why? Because then when you yarn over and pull back through, you're pinning those two stitches down so that your work looks identical to the front. So we're gonna go ahead and use this color to crochet the whole way back to the other side of this color. So what stitch are we on? Are we on seven or are we on nine? I think we're on nine. So yeah, that's one, two, three, four, five. Nope, we're on seven. Six. And don't worry if that purple gets a little weird when you're working because that's why you pull it. And then stitch number seven, stop. Leave it as a working yarn or a working stitch. You're going to pull that purple so it's nice and tight. Well, not too tight because you don't want your work to bunch up, but tight enough where you can't see it too much in the back. Or right, let me move that out of the way for you. And at this point, you can move that stitch marker. You don't really need it anymore. I just left it there for whatever purpose, but you can move that if you don't need it anymore. And we don't, so you can remove the stitch marker or leave it if you want. But when you get to this point, we're going to change color again. Now remember to leave that working strand there because you need it for your next row. And we're going to just continue going. And we're going to meet back up when it's time to go to up to the next row. So go ahead and half double crochet the entire way across. Chain one, half double all the way back to right before where that stitch turned, um, right before that first purple, before the color change. Leave it as a working stitch and I'll be right back. All right, are we doing okay so far? If not, please feel free to stop here, take a deep breath, try it again or catch up no problem everybody does this in their own time don't worry about how fast or slow somebody else is going worry about what speed is comfortable for you you're not in a race with anybody and this is supposed to be fun so make sure you have that part down packed before you move on to the next row now that we're on the next row if you are ready to get started we're going to go ahead and move on with the next row now i didn't leave that as a working stitch so we're gonna pull that strand out so we can make it a working stitch there we go so we have our three strands on the hook and now we're gonna go ahead and make sure that you remember to mark off the row that you just did and put your arrow showing you which direction you're going I did so now we have nine stitches going across three six nine and remember when you're graphing it will come on graph paper so each one of these squares, which is why I made it into a grid looking heart, each one of these squares is a stitch. So if this color is red and then this color changes to blue and then this color changes to yellow and this color changes back to red, you would do a red stitch, a blue stitch, a yellow stitch, a red stitch, a blue stitch. However the pattern tells you to change colors, that's how you would do it. Each block is a stitch. So one square...
equals one stitch. That's an easy way to remember it. One square equals one stitch. So, now that we have this working strand, we need to make nine colors on the teal. So, if you remember, you still have your working teal stitch or whatever color you're working with. Mine's is teal, obviously. So I'm gonna finish that purple half double crochet with the teal, like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab that purple because I'm gonna drag that along with me. And we're gonna put it into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. Pull through all three. Now we're gonna do that the whole way over to the other side. Now I'm going to work a little fast, like I said, for time's sake. This video is going to be a little bit longer, but this is the process and I can't rush the process because I don't want to. I want this to come out perfect, so I don't want to rush through it too much. So we're going to get it all the way. And as you can see, you can see that purple coming up through and you'll go ahead and get rid of that here in a few minutes when you pull your yarn. That's the reason you pull the yarn so that you can't see too much of that purple sitting on top of that teal or whatever color you're using. Like I said, you don't want to pull it too tight to the point where your work is starting to bunch, but you want to pull it tight enough that you can't see the purple too much. So we're going to pull it tight and you see how that purple went away? It's like magic. All right. So, we're going to do one more stitch in the, per the teal, and then we're going to go ahead and finish it off with the purple, and then finish off that row. And I'll meet you back on the other side. Now remember, you're going to half double crochet this way, and then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and half double crochet using your main color back the other way to right before that stitch, before it changes colors. And I'll meet you there. All right. And now that we're back to this point, I'm pretty sure I didn't mention, so I'm going to mention it now. You want to make sure your strand stays on the same side. You notice how on both sides, they look the exact same. Sorry, I got to push that over so you can actually see it. They look the exact same on both sides. That's because you're keeping your working strands on the same side. So make sure you don't move them from side to side. Leave it on the back of your work. That would be another good reason if you want to put your stitch marker there and not touch it and leave it there. Have your stitch marker, stitch marker sorry, pointing out towards the back of your work so that you know what side to leave that working strand on. So now that we're here, we're going to increase again. So let's look at our graph. I'm going to set it up here. So we did this row. And another reason why this is a good idea is because if you stop to do something, if you go eat, if you go, if you're like me and you have kids and you have to stop to do something with your kids or you, life happens. So if you have to stop for any reason, making sure you mark what row you've completed will help you because then you won't have to A, go back and count your stitches all over again and B, you'll know exactly where to pick up when you left off. So the next row is going to be here. And we're going to the right. So. And right before. And let's just count real quick because that's the other thing. Counting your stitches is important whenever you're in. Uh... Okay, sorry about that. So again, you want to count to make sure you have the correct number of color changes in your project. So at this point, we have one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now on your chart or your graph, the last row you did should have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So then your next row should have 11. So let's go ahead and complete that. So we're gonna put our hook back into the stitch. We're gonna pull it. We're gonna take our teal color or whatever secondary color you're using. We're gonna finish off that purple. And again, remember, pull that purple strand so that it's uniform and parallel to the teal strand or whatever color strand you're using. Put it underneath those two strands then put it into the stitch yarn over and pull it underneath those two strands as well. 
that is going to, and you're only going to do it for that one because that's just going to pull it up so that it is uniform with your stitches so it doesn't look like your color changed at all. It looks like it just magically happened. So now we're going to go ahead and finish off and we're going to carry that purple through. Some people like to cut it off. Some people will carry it through. I'm a big fan of carrying it through because I hate weaving in ends. And I know you're with me on that one. There are some people that don't seem to mind it. Me personally, I hate it. So I will carry as much as I can. Now there are some instances, like if you have an extremely bright color, you don't want to carry. Like if you have like a yellow and a black, you don't want to carry that. Uh, it's essentially up to you and your judgment. That's your judgment call as to if you carry the yarn through or not. Me personally, I don't like coloring or change. I don't like pulling it through bright and dark colors. All right, so we're gonna leave that last color change on there. And again, you can count it. You should have 11 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the working one is 11. Because then you're gonna finish that working one. You're gonna pull that yarn so that it's tight, not too tight, but tight enough that. And you can pull it out like that if you need to, if you pulled it too tight. You just want to pull it tight enough where it's not showing too much in between your stitches there. Okay? So then you're going to pull the purple strand through. And you're going to complete the round. And essentially, that is how you do it. And we're going to finish up this heart really quick. So I will meet you on the next row. All right. So this is the last increase of color of this row, or of the stitch. No, not the stitch, I'm sorry. Of the graph. Because as we can see, let's pull up our graph here. We've completed this row, so we're going to mark it off. And at this point is where I like to count all of my stitches. Because you want to make sure you have the exact same amount of stitches on each side. And then you want to make sure that you're at the point that you're supposed to be at. So I have three, including the one on my hook, and four. And then I have one, two, three, four on this side, which you want these two sides to be even because they were even down here. So that works out just fine. And then we have 11 in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and continue working. And then I'm going to let you go for the next two rows to do that on your own. And then we'll come back to do the decreasing of the color for the heart shape. Because essentially the next two rows are the exact same. So again, we're going to finish that color off with that teal or whatever color you're using for your secondary color. We're going to insert that into the stitch. Now, just like on the back of it, you're going to want to make sure if I can get that to focus on there for you. There we go. You're going to want to make sure to go underneath that teal strand and put that purple strand on top of it. And then you're just going to pull that through. And then pull that teal through. And you're going to carry that purple yarn all the way to the end. And I'll meet you back there. All right. And now that we've gotten back to this point, we have our working secondary color on our hook. We're going to go ahead and pull that, that main color tight. Not too tight. Just tight enough where you don't see it too much underneath your stitches. And then you're going to go ahead and finish that secondary color off with your main. And then finish out that row. Now, the next two rows are the exact same. You're not going to increase any. You're not going to decrease any. You're going to do the exact same thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to do your chain one. You're going to do your three colors of main, your main color. And then you'll do your 13 colors of, which let's make sure that's 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. So you're going to do three of your main color, 13 of your secondary color, and then three of your main color. And you're going to do that for two rows, and I'll meet you back there. All right, and we're back. How did you do so far? Are you still following us? I hope so, because it's time to start forming the top of the heart. So, this is where we should be at right now. Let me move that out the way so you can see it. This is the back of our work, and we know this. Why? Because our stitch marker is sticking out. So, this is the back of our little swatch, or our little dishcloth. It's looking so good, right? 
It looks adorable. I love it. All right. So we are going to look at our graph. So as you saw, like I said, those three rows were the exact same. And look, we only have two rows left. So we're actually going to take and your main color is going to go over top on this side, on this, this time. It's going to go over top and split. So that's another good reason why it's, you know, I like to carry it because I'm going to be splitting here. So I'm going to need that main color to use in the middle of that. So then let's see, we have five on this side, five on this side with a purple or main color in the middle. So we're going to put it, kind of put it in there. So let's go ahead and do this. And I hope you're remembering to put your arrows and marking off which row you've done already. All right, so we're here. Now, instead of um, adding another stitch of the teal, we're actually gonna take away a block of the teal. So we're gonna use our main color. We're gonna scoop up that tail or that working strand of teal and we're gonna work a half double crochet into that stitch there. We're gonna pull the t purple back, tighten that teal up so that you can't see that it's being carried. Then we're gonna add the teal to finish that working yarn. And then, like I said, we're gonna do five. One, two, oh, sorry, my hook came off. Oh, we're not even carrying the purple strand. Let's try that one more time. I'm sorry. See, even I make mistakes sometimes. And that's okay. Because I can just take it apart and start again. It's a process. So, one. Two. Three. And again, if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause wherever you need to so that you can catch up. Four, five. Now, you're gonna leave that fifth one as a working stitch. We're gonna pull that purple so that it's not bulging out the back or anything. We're gonna finish that working stitch with the purple. We're gonna work the purple into the next teal stitch by and pull up that working strand so that it's sitting on top. We're going to leave that purple as a working stitch and we're going to change color again. So if you missed that, we did five teal or five of our secondary color, one main color, and we're back to the secondary color. So then we're going to do five more. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to stop on that fifth one again, pull up our main color because we carried it through. So we're going to pull and finish off that fifth one. And then we should start having four main colors on each side. Two, three, four. And this is the part of the video where you can stop, take a look at it, see if it looks like this. Oh, if I can move that out of your way. This is actually, again, the back because we see the stitch marker marking that it's the back of the, the pattern. We're going to look at our pattern. We're going to go ahead and mark off that row because we just completed it. And we're on our last row. Can you believe it? If you've made it this far, congratulations. You stuck with it and you're doing it. You're making a graph. Can you even believe that right now? You're doing it. I bet you never thought you could. I didn't doubt you. So we're going to work that last one. Now, don't forget, put your arrow as to which direction you're going. So we just went this way. So now we're going this way. So this time, instead of, I'm sorry, you probably couldn't see that. Instead of having five, we're going to decrease by one on each side. So we're going to have three of the secondary color three of the main color and three of the secondary color and then back to your side. So let's go ahead and execute that real quick. Chain one. So we're gonna go ahead and
Sometimes if I go too fast, my hook slips off the loop. That's just crocheting's way of telling me that I need to slow down. You're going too fast. Slow down. Take a deep breath. It's okay. All right, so on that fifth one, one, two, three, four, five of your main color, you're going to go ahead and leave that as a working. Pull up that secondary. Pull it through to finish that stitch. Grab that purple strand so that you can carry it. Do three of your secondary color. One, two, three. We're gonna leave that third one as a working stitch. Come up with our main color. Pull it through. We're gonna do three of our main color. Don't forget to grab that teal strand to carry it through. So one, two, three. We're going to go ahead and pull that. On the third stitch of the main color again, you're going to pull up that secondary color to finish that stitch for your color change. You're going to grab that purple strand in the back to make sure that you're carrying it through. You're going to do three of your secondary color. Two, three, now, because this is the last stitch of that secondary color, what I like to do on that third stitch, you're going to pull up that main color, finish that stitch off, and I will do the next two stitches with that secondary color underneath, and then I'll just let it drop. Well, you can do three. Then I'm just going to let it drop. I'm going to finish out the stitches right here. And then for that there, can you see your heart? Flip it around to the back. Can you see it? It's flawless, right? There's no ends to weave in. There's nothing keeping you like on the back from it being fuzzy or anything. And for that secondary color, you no longer need it. So we're gonna pull that to make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna snip it off about a not even really an inch, just a little tail right there. And then all you're going to do next is half double crochet the whole way across. If I can slow down here. I got excited. We're almost done. Essentially, you're done with your graph. Your graphing is complete. That is how you graph gam. That's how you graph gam a blanket, a scarf, anything. Now that you've gotten this down, you can essentially put a graph on anything. You just gotta make sure you do all the measurements and all that other fun stuff. But that's how you graph people. That was literally the end of the graph. If you made it this far, again, congratulations. I'm very proud of you. A lot of people give up on trying to learn how to graph and I tell you, it's absolutely amazing. I'm a crocheter that doesn't like to sew. I, which is funny because I can cross stitch, but I'm not a big fan of sewing. And so I love making patterns like this for graph ganning where I don't have to sew pieces on after I've already completed the main part of it. So like I don't have to make a blanket and then grab or make little obliques to put on it. We're going to get rid of that teal because it's like wrapped around there. So now that we're done with the teal, we can put that to the side there. We have our purple. We're going to pull some of this out because we're going to do two plain rows or you can do however many plain rows of it that you would like. I'm just going to do two to finish up this tutorial just so you can see what it looks like because you give essentially this is you giving it a border. Now you can always after you're done with that you can always take the teal color and go around the edges of it with a single crochet or even a double crochet. Uh, or if you like the shell stitch or anything like that fancy wise you can always go over it like that This would make a great coaster if you make it a little bit bigger It would make a great dish rag or even now it would still make a great dish rag. It's you know handheld size It's not real big. Um, I do 
suggest if you're going to make a dish rag though that you don't use red heart i would suggest using a cotton yarn something that can breathe and something that will dry properly uh where this will dry properly if you dry it with a dish rag nobody really throws them into the dryer after you're done using them so you know i would go with a cotton yarn if you're going to do a dish rag but just for this swatch which is a practice a swatch essentially is practicing doing something so this is our practice swatch that you've just completed. And once I put this last stitch in here, I am then going to cut off my main color. I don't need it anymore, because guess what? We're done. So I'm gonna stick that tail in there and then I'm gonna bring it around here to pull it through here, just to get myself a nice knot. And there you have it. We're going to tuck that in just so it's nice and pretty for you. And we can go ahead and get rid of, not that. I mean, you could get rid of your tail now. We can get rid of that stitch marker. And as you can see, this is the back of your work. Can you believe that's the back? Because look, it looks just as good as the front, doesn't it? And then this is the easy part, because this is how I do my graphs, which is why my front and my backs look the same, okay? And as you can tell, remember the beginning where we looked at it and we're like, oh, that doesn't look right. That looks off-center and everything. Does it look off-center now? Take a look. And that, folks, is how you do a graph. If you have any questions, comments, concerns that you would like me to know, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If this video was at all helpful to you, I do implore that you hit the like button. If you haven't already, also hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I put up new videos. I do do other videos on top of crocheting, but I promise to keep them labeled properly so that you know which one is a crochet tutorial and which one is a diamond painting. Um, thank you again for watching. Again, if you have any questions or concerns or, you know, have anything to say, leave it down in the description or the comment section below. I love reading your comments and I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Again, my name is Miss Crochet and Coffee and it was my pleasure to bring this tutorial to you today. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.